In this video, I will share some tips to speed up your simulation in Abacus Explicit. We will cover simulation speed gain by increasing loading rate, by increasing material density artificially, by using mass scaling, by using time scaling, reducing the request output in history and field output, use more cores in your processor, check the minimum increment and avoid too much or too small local mesh, and finally reduce the mesh in unnecessary portion of your model. There is another video in the link given in the description that will give you tips on speeding up Abacus standard or static general simulation. The first tips is increasing loading rate which can be done by reducing the time period in Abacus step. If we pull this dog bone specimen for 30 mm in one second, but then we choose to pull this up again for 30 mm in 0.1 second, so that means that our strain rate has increased due to decreasing this time period. Be careful that you also change your amplitude for load or the boundary condition to comply with this reduced time period in the step by reducing the time period 10 times from 1 second to 0.1 second the simulation speed has increased by 10 times let's check that for time period 1 the total cpu time or simulation run run time was more than 2300 second but when we used time period 0.1 the same simulation took only 246 seconds so that's approximately 10 times faster. Interestingly, the deformation of the dog bone specimen was same. Also, the force displacement response that was measured from this end was same for both 0.1 second simulation and one second simulation. The stable time increment is very important. When the time period is one, the stable time increment is around seven e to the power minus seven. Then when we decreased our step time to be 0.1, the stable in time increment was still seven e to the power minus seven. So if we by any means can increase the stable time increment that will reduce our CPU time or simulation runtime. For example, if the stable time increment is increased by 10 times that means if it is uh, if we tweak something such that it becomes 7 e to the power minus 6 there is a 10 times increase in stable time increment we can run the whole simulation about even 10 times faster which means about 24 second by doing that we can reduce the total runtime of 2300 seconds to only 23 seconds to do so first we try to understand what is this minimum stable time increment so this increment for a given mesh size and for a given material is given by this formula so in this formula le is the characteristic length of the element rho is the density and E is the Young's modulus of the material that we are using. For this simulation, I have used uh, LDP, which had a density of 940 kg per meter cube, Young's modulus of 250 megapascal, and characteristic length of about 0 0.0005 meter. So when we put back all this value into this uh, formula, we find this is about 7.7 .7 e to the power minus 7 which is close to the stable time increment that is given by abacus as i said that increasing this stable time increment 10 times will speed up this simulation also by 10 times so that means this uh, characteristic length of the element if it uh, from 0 0.0005 it becomes 0 0.005 so that would make this delta or stable time increment to be 10 times larger 7.7 .7 e to the power minus 6 and that would mean that the simulation will run 10 times faster so to get this characteristic length larger we have to use larger sized element but that might always not be possible but that's good to know that uh, the size of the element is directly proportional to the computation time for explicit simulation more importantly 
this characteristic length of this element will represent the smallest element in your model so if you have a model where all the elements are 0 0.0005 but uh, there are one element which is very small and that has size of 0 0.00005 which is 10 times smaller that means due to that one element your explicit simulation del t stable time increment would be 10 times smaller as a result your simulation time required for uh, solving this model would be 10 times higher so it is very important in explicit simulation that you keep uh, the minimum size of element as big as possible in your model or the minimum element should not be too small compared to the rest of the elements because otherwise you will lose a lot of advantage of using larger element everywhere else due to that one small element so you may ask how this characteristic length is calculated in an element so if there is a one dimensional element if it is a line so the length of the element is the characteristic length if it is linear formulation if that uh, line element is quadratic formulation then the characteristic length is the length of the element divided by 2 and uh, for a square element or two dimensional element for example the characteristic length is uh, approximately the square root of the area of that element and uh, in this example as we have three dimensional element the characteristic length will be the cubic root of the volume of this element another way of finding this characteristic uh, element length is to divide this volume the whole volume by the area that has the maximum side i can give you an example how this uh, length is affecting the stable time increment for example here the characteristic length is larger than this one you can understand the volume has decreased as we have uh, pulled a particular element from here the volume has decreased as a result the characteristic length decreases as the simulation goes ahead we can see this effect in stable time increment size initially it was 7 it is the power minus 7 but as it goes forward as this uh, specimen gets pulled the characteristic length decreases and as a result the stable time increment decreases so it decreases eventually from point seven to five e to the power minus seven it gives us the knowledge that if we artificially increase the density let's say by 100 times so this density comes here so root over 100 becomes 10 that means uh, the stable time increment will increase by 10 times as a result your simulation will speed up by 10 times but uh, be careful when you increase artificially the density of the material because that might physically uh, change the the result and the result might not be presenting the actual physics in many cases increasing the density artificially by some margin will not affect the simulation result uh, significantly so let's try out and uh, put the density to be 94,000. so if you put that density in our material definition and then run the same simulation we will see that the cpu time or the total simulation run time has become only 23 seconds due to the increase in the density now we will see what happens as we have increased the density by 100 times once plotted the force and displacement response for each model the regular density and 100 times larger density we could see the force displacement response were almost identical that means at least in this particular case by increasing the density and also by reducing the step time the simulation result did, did not vary much not in force displacement response and also not in the stress distribution or the deformation but we have made a significant gain in our simulation time the original one took 2300 seconds when you reduced the step time from 1 second to 0 0.1 second it took 246 second but when on top of reduction on step time we increased the density the simulation ran only in 23 seconds tip number three is 
mass scaling. Mass scaling is almost like increasing the density because when you increase density, the mass of uh, the material that you are using also increases. But using mass scaling in Abacus, you can be a bit more clever than uh, increasing the density in the whole specimen. So let's see how you can define mass scaling and how you can uh, control different parameters in mass scaling. So for mass scaling in Abacus, explicit, so go to step, there's an explicit step, and then go to mass scaling. In here, you can use scaling definition as below and then create a mass scaling definition. So you can choose to scale the whole model or you can choose to scale only a set of elements for mass. Let's say we start with selecting the whole model. Then uh, we can define the mass scaling factor. Here, if I put that mass scaling factor is 100, so that is almost the same thing that we did by increasing the density by 100. You can also choose your target time increment. If you do that, then uh, for example, in our case, we had seven e to the power minus seven to be our uh, time increment that was used by Abacus. But in here, if we put seven e to the power minus six and uh, don't do any uh, mass scale factor, just by doing that, that means that uh, we are asking Abacus to increase the time step by 10 times. So then to increase the minimum time increment 10 times, it will automatically go ahead and increase the density by 100 times. So that's how this mass scaling is done. So you can either define uh, the scale in your mass or you can directly say that what is the minimum time increment that you want and uh, to correspond to that increment, the mass would be automatically scaled. So that is done here. So you can either do that or you can choose this particular thing. Both will have almost similar effect in your simulation time, but then you can choose accordingly. But the best way of mass scaling is uh, scaling in the set instead of whole model. But then uh, which set? So let's see how we can find a useful set where we want to define the mass scaling. To find that when you are in mesh module, you can click this verify mesh from here or from here. And then it says select the region you want to verify. You select the whole region. Here I can put that uh, to identify the elements that will require stable time increment less than one e to the power minus six. So let's highlight. So that actually means that uh, only at these elements, I will need a stable time increment less than this. Everywhere else, it's larger than this particular value. This actually is an indication of the characteristic length of the other elements are larger than the characteristic length of the highlighted element, which means these elements are smaller as a result they need a smaller time increment. But uh, as uh, they need smaller in time increment, the whole model will need a smaller stable time increment. And as a result, your whole model would be punished due to these few elements, which are relatively small. By defining this time increment, you can identify your small elements. And once you have done that, so uh, once you have this uh, quantity written here, your target's uh, time increment, and once you click highlight, it will have these elements. Then you can click and say create set. So I say poor element uh, set, I named this one, and uh, there would be set created named poor element set. For example, this one, poor element set. Now I can go again to the mass scaling and instead of the whole model, we can say that particular four element set in that place, I want to mass scale such that the minimum time increment is one e to the power minus six, because that what we wanted, that what was right for all elements other than the highlighted element, or we can even pick to have larger increment but that means that will artificially increase the weight of that elements too much. So try to have a balance such that uh, in these poor elements, you don't do mass scaling too much such that uh, those elements then have larger time increment, 
compared to rest of the elements so that it doesn't uh, serve any purpose i can also choose to have a, a mass scaling factor directly about two in my particular case as the elements were not uh, too different so setting a factor of two for mass probably is good enough for me in step instead of using mass scaling we can also try to use time scaling in incrementation but it has similar effect with mass scaling if we increase our time scale to be 10 that means it will increase 100 times the mass this is because increasing the mass by 100 times as we already described increases the density 100 times uh, will increase the stable time increment 10 times because root over 100 is equal to 10. so this particular scaling actually does the scaling on the whole model and uh, this is uh, similar to mass scaling doing on the whole model the next tip is reducing the history output and uh, the field output so here i have opened the field output request so if we select that uh, the result is saved every time increment in an explicit simulation let's see how many increments were there when we used uh, time period to be one and uh, use the original model so the increment number is given here and finally there was 1.6 million increments required to complete this simulation so if you put this frequency every time increment that means the after each increment the simulation has to write down the result in the odb so total of 1.6 million times that slows down a explicit simulation significantly so instead you can choose evenly spaced time interval you can say that uh, you want 20 or you might have 100 inter intervals so that means out of that 1.6 million so it will take at equidistance 100 points and save those result at those 100 steps and will not save for the rest so that will speed up your simulation significantly do the same also for the history output and also make sure you don't uh, request for unnecessary outputs if you think some of them are unnecessary just uh, tick here and get rid of that from the list of requested variable results next tip is using more cores in your processor here is a benchmark uh, example when using uh, intel xeon processor so it shows that for a particular simulation using one core it took that much time and when you use two cores instead of ones the simulation is speeded up by 1.9 times and then if you use uh, four cores instead of two the simulation is uh, speeded up additionally 1.8 times in abacus job if you go to parallelization so by default this uh, processor is uh, written two. you can increase it from two to four and okay so just using this step you have increased your simulation speed approximately 1.8 times if you are using a intel i7 processor you have four cores that you can use if you are using some other processor and you are not sure how many cores you can use open the task manager then in performance tab you can find out the number of cores in your processors then change the number here probably you have the abacus token available for you to use at multiple uh, processors the final tip is reduce mesh in unnecessary portion in this particular example we are uh, peeling off uh, this arm from this base so the interface here is the most important portion of the whole model for example this portion uh, having larger elements is a good option but instead if you do the mesh such that you also have more elements in this portion that's definitely a bad choice this increases your simulation time because the total number of elements in this model is increasing so this is a benchmark uh, simulation result that says that uh, with increasing the number of elements your simulation time increases little 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 and as you keep increasing your element number more and more the the simulation time increases exponentially of course be careful that you cannot reduce your element number too little because there's another study called mesh convergence so you have to find 
that where by increasing the number of element your result doesn't change much and try to find a sweet spot somewhere probably here where you are using sufficient amount of element but at the same time it's that uh, number of elements is not too big such that your solve time is reasonable now probably you can increase your explicit simulation speed but take great care because tweaking this variable that i showed you to increase the simulation speed might affect the actual simulation result you might end up with some result that's not physically viable 